Here you go. Yes, sir. <coughs> Counselor. Mm. Thanks. Coffee. And they tell me that he's here. Is he here? Please he's in the he's back. Here. Nice hat. Oh, yeah. It's actually for you. All of the old movie stars wear them. You look fabulous. Hey, Hi. I've been looking everywhere for you. Where you have, have you been? I'm right here. What's up? You, you, you. We are a year and a half into the new millennium, and it is high time for you to get with the program. Okay. Um, I wasn't really sure what your style was yet, so I went for like a. Like a, you know, Tom Cruise meets Harrison Ford kind of thing. Hmm. It's good, though. Here. Yeah? Old movie star. Oh, yeah, good. Uh, um, well, hold on one second here. What's the matter with the way yeah, I dress? See, I like the way I dress. The thing is, if you wanted me to babe with bucks, you're going to have to have a little flash. A babe with what? Come on. Let's get dressed. Come on! That's a good look. Ms. Wolf? Yes? Your secretary said I'd find you here. Edmund Winslow. I'm Richard Winslow's brother. I understand you're handling the Lewis case. Riva, Lewis, right. It just crossed my desk. As you can well imagine, I want to see this case prosecuted to the full extent of the law. That's what I do, Mr. Winslow. If you'll excuse me, I'm late for a deposition. Ms. Wolf, a moment, please. Think about it. Prince. A ruler, murdered, struck down as prime. A case like this can define a career. I understand you have political aspirations. A win here could only encourage them. I have every intention of winning. Of course you do. But what if... What if I could guarantee it? I'm listening. Please, try to understand, okay? My husband, he just passed away, and things have been a little difficult lately. No, no, future payments won't be a problem. It's just that there are other creditors that I have to deal with, and I'm trying to open up a new hotel, and there's renovations that... Okay, fine, okay? Fine. You'll get your money. Hey, Cassie. Hey, Mike. Do you ever wish that, um... The, your dreams were the real world and that... all this was a nightmare and you'd just wake up? Yeah. Well, that's why I'm here. I want to help you get back on your feet. I think you should start with your sister. I don't think so. Cassie, I, I understand how upset you are with Reva. Honey, this is your sister. Come on, you can't sit back and let them do this to her. Do what? You don't know. Reva's been arrested for Richard's murder. Reva, we have an awful lot to do before this hearing this afternoon. And I don't think I have to tell you it'd be very helpful to have Josh here. Yeah, well, you know, I used my one phone call to try to reach him in Russia, and I couldn't. So the guard told me I could try again, and I called you instead. I told Shane to keep trying from the house. Shane? Yes, I told him where you are. I had to. Reva, the most important thing we can do today is present a united front and show you as a mother and a wife that has the full support of her family. In cases like this, it's absolutely crucial. What did he say when you told him? Well, any number of things. And in short, he wanted to come here and break you out. So Shane is not a problem. He's going to be at the hearing. It's Mara I'm worried about. We haven't been able to find her. Yeah, well, you're going to have to leave Mara out of this, just for now. We can't, Ava. We need her. 
Ross, Mara is struggling with this. She doesn't know where she stands, and I don't want to pressure her, so just leave her alone for now. Just let it go. I can't. I don't think you fully understand what you're facing. If we don't win this hearing, you're going to be here for a long time. Excuse me. Ross Marler. What do you mean, the changing judges? I got to take care of this. Excuse me. Well, unless someone's having a medical problem, they can't be doing that. Yes, hello. I'm Holly Reed from Hi. the Springfield Journal. Um, I have a feeling a friend of mine is around here up to no good. Uh, and you got a tip that he might be here? Exactly. Dr. Bauer, Ed Bauer? Oh. Uh-oh. The press is oh. descending. Here's your you? friend. She yes. is a friend. Oh, right? from way back. Listen, I still can't get the fax machine to work. I'm sorry. I'll go check it. Thank you. <laughs> How are you? Uh-huh. I haven't seen you since I made the mistake of trying to get you and Buzz to sit down together. And... I... <laughs> yeah, what was that? I... Never mind about me. But, um... It's Buzz. Ever since you came back, he has been... unnerved about... our relationship. Yeah, I know. I hope you talk to him, you know, because the last thing I want to do is, is you know, make your life complicated. So, this is, uh, the clinic. This is it. I mean, this will be it when we fix it up. Mm -hmm. Ross donated the space. You know, a bunch of us are going to share it. We just figure there are a lot of people out there who need some, uh, medical attention, some mm -hmm. counseling, and maybe just a place to sleep, you know? Who can't afford it otherwise. Yeah. We're going to call it my friend's couch. What do you think? That's great. I like it. Listen, I would like to write a feature article about it, and, um, anything else I can do to help. You want to help? Sky's the limit. This is a screwdriver. Roll up your sleeves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you go. Look it right. All right, Kate. Okay. So when Dad comes out, what I'm going to need from you is it, it's very, very important that you really, really show your appreciation. Okay. Okay. You know what? Um. Why don't you try something along the lines of, like, Frank? My God, I almost didn't recognize you. I probably won't, you know. But I'm telling you, he is going to look hip. He is going to look stylish because I went to every happening store in town. Marina, your, your father's been dressing himself for years now. Yeah, that's my point exactly. The man has not had a date in years. We have to help him. We? What the fuck? I mean, you, you, you have a girlfriend, right? You know what's happening. You just need to like clue him in, give him some tips or something. Frank doesn't need tips from me. Fine, I'll do it on my own then. You do that. Yeah, I will. <laughs> Not one word. Hello. Frank, my God, I almost didn't recognize you. It's all there. Every word from the hearing at the hospital, including Reva's confession. How did you get this? The point is that I did. 
I understand it's not admissible as evidence, at least in its present form. But now that you know it exists, you can subpoena a copy for trial. Who knows? Maybe even work on a bit of it at the bail hearing this afternoon. Well, you are ahead of me, aren't you, Mr. Winslow? I owe it to my brother to do what I can for his attorney. Mm. And of course, if I get a conviction, that sets you up nicely for a wrongful death suit against Miss Lewis. Are you suggesting that I'm doing this for financial gain? Your reputation precedes you, Mr. Winslow. I should think that you'd welcome my help, especially considering that this transcript is just the beginning. What else? If you're going to win this case, you're going to have to put a face on the crime. A face with which a judge and jury can sympathize, feel sorry for. And that face would be? That of my brother's widow, Cassie Winslow. Hi. I didn't expect to see you. Well, I, I didn't know if I could come. But I ran into someone who reminded me of something. That when someone you love is in trouble, no matter what the problem, you don't turn your back on them. I do still love you, Mom. I love you too, honey. And I'm sorry that you have to go through all this, but you don't have to stay. I'm going to be fine. There's a bail hearing this afternoon. and I know. That's um, part of the reason that I came. What's this? Cass Winthrop. He's the kind of attorney who knows how to make things happen. He's a real shark, and he can probably get you off no matter Mara, what. Mara, how would you find a guy like... Tony? You went to Tony to try to help me. Mom, I had to. That couldn't have been easy for you. Well, it's a lot easier than seeing you in here. Uh... Tony swears by this guy, said that he's never loses, so do you want me to call him? Mara, glad to see you. Um, I hope that you're going to stick around for the bail hearing. Ross. What? No. All right. It's not long before the hearing starts, so if you want to discuss strategy, now is the time. Well, what kind of strategies do you need for a bail hearing? First and foremost, we have to enter a plea. So what's it going to be, Reed? Guilty or not guilty? Reva's in jail? They found her at the cemetery. She was by Richard's gravesite. When? Yesterday afternoon. Edmund dragged half the police force down there. You'd think he'd have, had a, he'd have a little more respect for his brother's final resting spot, but this is Edmund we're talking about. It must have happened right after I left. But how? That hospital meeting was supposed to be confidential. I don't know, but Edmund knew. All right. How did Edmund know? Who cares how it happened? It, Reva is what is important. She's going to be arraigned this afternoon. And you can bet that Edmund's going to be there to make sure that she isn't put in jail for life. Is Ross representing her? Yes, he is, but there's only so much he can do if Edmund is after blood. Oh, come on, Cassie. This is Edmund after your sister. This is Reva in jail for something she did, Blake. It's not like the charges are false. She made a decision about Richard that wasn't hers to make. Honey, Richard's gone. And you can't get him back. Do you want to lose your sister, too? was going to plead guilty because it's the only way to end all of this without a trial or a bunch of publicity and Cassie having to read about it in the newspapers day after day. But the only problem with that is that if I plead guilty, I'm saying I was wrong. And as difficult as this is for you to hear and for Cassie to hear, I was not wrong. I did what Richard asked me to do. Mom, if you could have seen the look in his eyes and the pain, 
Those machines were keeping him alive. Machines. I flipped a switch, but I didn't kill him. He died because the machine was turned off, because his own body couldn't keep him here. Richard's body was already gone, Mara. He was dead, and he knew it. But, Mom, if you could go back and you could do it again... I would do the same thing. I'd do it for Richard. So I guess I am guilty. Mom, will you please let me call no. him? No. I'm not calling Cass Winthrop. I would trust Ross with my life. Which I guess is exactly what I'm doing. Well, if that's what you're doing, you're going to have to let me do the talking in court today. Ross. Reva, if you want me to help, you have to let me help. Can you put yourself in Reva's situation? Someone she loved was suffering and they were in pain. My husband. Richard was my husband. Which is why he went to Reva. To spare you. Do you think Reva wanted to do what she did? No. But I think she was acting impulsively like she always does. I love you so much. You know I would do anything for you. You know that. But I gotta tell you, deep down, I'm I'm feeling sorry for Reva because I think I might have done the same thing. No. Actually, you know what? I know I would have. No, you wouldn't have. Only Reva. Only Reva would have done something like this, okay? She did this without even thinking, without a thought to me or my children, Blake. It wasn't her call to make. That's what this is about. I didn't get to say goodbye to him. I didn't get to say goodbye to Richard. She took that away. She took all of it away. Richard took it away. Richard. Richard asked Reva for help. Richard wanted to shield you. So he made this huge request. I think you're angry at Richard. But you can't blame him because he's not around. So you're blaming Reva. Imagine the publicity. The prince's widow, bereft, heartbroken, standing by your side as the cameras zoom in to find your arm protectively around her shoulder. You're not just prosecuting a mercy killing case anymore. You're seeking justice for a famous, beloved ex-princess who was wronged by her sister. I understand all of that, Mr. Winslow, but we're Do you? Do you really understand, Miss Wolfe? Because you're going to need Cassie Winslow in your courtroom every day, every minute, so that people can see the depth of her grief, feel her pain. With Cassie Winslow on your side, you'll get the conviction you need, the conviction that will make you every bit as famous as your bereaved client. Then the question is, can you deliver her? Yes, I think I can. As a matter of fact, I know I can. We will continue with part two of Guiding Light in a moment. Yeah, no, no, really, look, it's, it's pretty, you know, Marina's got a, and yet another outfit she wants me to try on. This one she's calling the wet look, so I'm really getting concerned here. Frank, she just wants the help. Yeah, well, I don't need that kind of help. What I need, read, need right now is beer. What if it works, Frank? No, I mean it. I mean, what if, 
What if she fixes you up, finds you the woman of your dreams, you settle down, you buy a house, you wake up with somebody you actually want to talk to? Would that be so bad? Poppy, make it sound like maybe you want her to help you. We all need some help sometime. What kind of help are we talking about here? I mean, uh, you're not having problems with Holly, are you? Well, she's busy, you know, lots of things. With Ed Bauer? Pop, you're not afraid of a little competition. Come on, because some of from the four I sit here. I mean, there's, there's no contest. You're biased. No, 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 what I am is a detective, and I'm trained to observe. And you know what I see? What? I see a guy acting a little edgy. I mean, I, I see a guy who's doing stuff that I don't think you'd ever would have done before Ed got back into town. Stuff like what? Maybe putting Holly on the spot about where you guys stand. Pop, she's been through a lot. I mean, one hell of a lot. And, uh, you, know, uh, you know, by you putting pressure on her, I, I think maybe that's scaring the hell out of her. So you think I'm pushing her away? Maybe. A little. I mean, not unintentionally, but yeah. Well, great, then. I'll sit it out and let her figure out what she wants no, to do. No, 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 no. What you got to do is you got to do it now. You got to outdo Ed. Oh, I mean, Ed, don't get me wrong. Ed's a nice guy, but Pop, you're nicer. Look at you. You're my dad. You're my hero. Come on. You're sexy. You're romantic. Frank, you're a good man. Frank, I'm your no, father. No, really, put on the old Cooper charm. Nobody could compete with well, that. You know, a few years ago, maybe. A few years ago? What's the matter? What am I hearing out of your mouth? But you still have it, Pop. You got it right in here, big guy. No, really. Come on. Take her out. Wine or dine her. Do a little dancing, you know, maybe take her bowling. Bowling. Yeah, bowling. You know what I'm talking about. Really, yeah, don't, don't, don't go out and give her attitude and don't be talking about the relationship. Just, just let her know that you know where she's coming from. And you know what, Pop? I, I guarantee you, she'll forget Ed. Oh, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe you got a point. Maybe the next time I see her... No, there is no next time. You should go do it right now. Will you watch the store? If this next outfit doesn't kill me, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll see if she's at the office first. Hey, you know something? What? Right. You're a good kid. Well, maybe Marina has an outfit for you, Dad. No, I think she's got her hands full with you. You hold. So somebody donated all this? Uh, well, I did the bookcase. How generous of you. <laughs> Listen, what on earth is a lug nut? Um, no, not, not that. <laughs> no, no, that's a washer. Even I know that. Yeah. <clears throat> I guess I wouldn't make it as a surgical nurse. Well, neither would the patient. <laughs> what? I don't know. It's just kind of fun watching you like this. What, pretending that I know what I'm doing, putting together a bookcase? No. Reinventing your life. Oh, please. Nothing as dramatic as that. I'm just trying to find a place where I could fit in, you know? Well, you have a place at home and with your family. And you could have had a job at the hospital if you wanted. Yeah, but everything's different now. You know, I can't have the same relationships I had before I left. My friends, kids. Me? Holly, all those years when Roger was filling your life with passion and misery, what was I to you? I was just a safety net. I was the boring, friendly guy that you could depend on. I'd have a lot of trouble doing that for anyone now. For anyone or just for me? Anyone. I've seen things, you know? Changes you, that's all. I'm sorry, Cassie, I am. I'm just worried about Reva, and I know deep down you are, too. I'm worried about everything right now, Blake. The other day, Tammy let RJ play in the basement here, and he cut himself on a wire. I have to be on top of everything right now, or it all goes wrong. No. Honey, why are you staying here? I mean, this is, this is really no place for children. You know what? You should stay at my place. Ross and I moved out, and it's going to be a long time before we renovate. I, I don't know. I can't even talk about it. You know, I'm, I can't make those kind of decisions right now. I'm just so... I don't know. I'm just in a weird place, and I can't even think about it right now. I realize that, but you're going to have to decide 
soon, at least about Riva. Your bail hearing is this afternoon. It's not going to wait for you to sort things out. If you want to help her. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt what you're saying. It's really none of your business. Cassie, may I have a word with you, please? No, I don't think she wants to speak with you. Reva's bail hearing is this afternoon. And if you're interested in the outcome, I strongly suggest you attend. Who the hell cares what you suggest, Edmund? Blake. Can I have a minute with Edmund? I'd like to hear what he has to say. Hold on a second. Was that Holly on the phone? That's her secretary. Gave me this address. That's not Holly's. That's uh, Ross Marler's office. Well, you're right. Look, keep an eye on the place, OK? There are potatoes coming. They have to get in the kitchen. All right. Yeah, yeah. I'll be sure to get that delivery. OK. I'm looking at this. Hey, hey. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you leaving? Tell yes. me you're not leaving. No, I am leaving. But I saved all of the best outfits for last. You have to see them. Well, take a Polaroid. Yeah. Yeah, probably Cooper, right? Yeah. Uh, Okay. What now? Well, I mean, for starters, Dad, you could show a little more enthusiasm. What now? A jacket. A jacket. All right, come on. Try it on. Let's see. All right. How about your old man here? Ooh. Mm-hmm. Hey. Whoa. Dad, you were so Michael Douglas in that. Michael Douglas? Yeah. This is not, uh, this is not bad, actually. I'm not kidding you. I mean, it is. It's stylish, it's elegant, and I... I think I'd marry you myself. Oh, that's, uh, really isn't, that looks pretty good, right? Yeah. I mean, come here. Oh, come here, my little makeover artist. <laughs> I love you. I love you, too. I mean, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You what? look like a million bucks. You look like someone with real money. Ah, speaking of which, uh, how did you pay for all this? Oh, uh, your credit card. I mean, I mean, I hope that's okay, but... You know what? There are some pants that go with that jacket, and I have to run and get them. They will look fabulous. Here you go. What's this? The bill. Think, huh? Architecture. Uh, you know, I, I confess that ever since you've come back, I find myself scrutinizing you, what you do and what you say. Yeah? And of course, you've changed. I mean, everyone has. I know that I have changed a lot. Who could avoid it? No one. Well, I, um, I have, uh, seen things, a lot of things, and I've done things that uh, I feel ashamed of. Yeah? The drinking? Mm -hmm. School bus of little kids? Huh? You, you know that, don't you? It's, it's just so horrendous. Yeah, but you're fine now. You're fine now. You've got a good life. I guess. Well, an uncomplicated life. Nothing wrong with that? I don't know. I kind of miss complicated.
Rita, this hearing's running a little late, so it's gonna be a few minutes. Why don't you have a seat, and I'll be right back. Where are you going? I'm gonna talk to my assistant. She's been doing some research. I'll be right back. Mom, you're nervous about this hearing, aren't you? I, I really just want it all to be over. And what if you don't make bail? Well, we'll worry about that later. I'm so glad you decided to come. Your uh, brother's supposed to be here, too. Yeah, I talked to him. He was just changing clothes. Why didn't you call us when you got arrested? Well, I, I, I guess I wasn't thinking clearly. Have you spoken to Cassie? No, I don't even think she knows about this unless she read it in the oh, newspaper. Oh, no, I'm, I'm sure she knows about it. I was just wondering how she was taking it. You mean, does she want to see you convicted? Well, I mean, after that meeting at the hospital, she was so angry. At the end, she wouldn't listen to anything I had to say. And I've never been so scared in my entire life. Richard was taken from us. And as painful as it is, your sister was the one who did that. Now, I know any suggestion I make is going to be greeted with a certain amount of suspicion. Yeah. You got that right. But I'm only here because I want to see this case handled properly and not because I'm trying to settle an old score, but because what Reva did was wrong. She took it upon herself to end my brother's life, your husband's life, without so much as a phone call. Well, I, I don't know if you deserve a phone call, Edmund. I harbored a great deal of resentment towards my brother. It's true, but still he was my brother and I loved him. Too bad you never told him that. Love and hate, Cassie, are two sides of the same coin. Richard understood that. Just as you must understand that I hate the thing that happened to him every bit as much as you do. What do you want from me? Thank you. I want you to attend the hearing this afternoon. You deserve justice, Cassie. We both do. And Richard would be alive today if someone hadn't taken We that. don't know that. No, you're right, we don't. But if he had died any other way, at least it would have been God's will and not Reva's. Now I have to go, the hearing's about to start. I hope you'll consider what I've said. I know you'll be sorry if you don't. Well, you know where to find me. What was that all about? Oh. You know, um, I have to go. Where are you going? I'm going to the bell here. OK, I'm driving you. Get it on. If you want to get young and sassy, bold and brassy, there's one place to get it on. If you want to get your whole world turned, let your life burn, the best place to get it on. Go ahead, girl, get it on. Get it on. Don't be afraid now, get it on. Get it on. Get it on, yeah, get it on. Are you trying to escape? <laughs> no. No, I'm not trying to escape. I just needed to come out here and get a little fresher after looking at this. Yeah, well, I'm telling you, it's going to be worth every penny because you are going to be a chick magnet in those clothes, okay? If you say so. I know so. Daddy, take it from me. First impressions oh, are no, no, absolutely no, 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 everything. No, 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 First impressions, let me tell you about first impressions. They could be deadly wrong. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I... I would love to think that I can get uh, a new date or a new woman by putting on a brand new shirt Ooh, and some you're so pants. stubborn! getting more and more like her every single day. Like who? Like your mother. Wow. I, no, no. 
quote from Greece where she stowed away. Uncle Starvos told you he brought you a bride. It was hate at first sight. I've heard it. Yeah, uh, on both parties. <laughs> but uh, I, I never, never wanted to have an arranged marriage, that's for sure. And she just went to the rich American guy. With some guy who worked on cars and in a diner. It wasn't quite that simple. And why'd she marry Philip Spalding's younger brother? Because, I mean, I, don't, I mean, if he's anything like Philip, it sure wasn't for his personality. Once again, it's a little bit more complicated than what you're making it. Mm. And the point is, is that your mother, she eventually came around. For a while. I take that back. I think you're more like your Aunt Harley. Um, better yet, I think you're a perfect cross between your Aunt Harley and your mother. And you want to know something? I am dead man okay, walking you know here. what? No, no, no. No more about Mom, Harley, me. We need, we need to focus on you now. I really don't think it's too late for you to find love, Dad. I mean, look at Grandpa. He has Holly. And, and, and you're a great guy. I just, I really believe that there is someone still out there for you. Oh, don't be. No, I shouldn't have done that. I don't know what came over me. Same thing that came over me. When... No, just, you know, Buzz keeps talking about you and me. And I... Buzz! Hi! We were just talking about you, weren't we? Yeah. I, I just came over here to interview him, uh, to get the inside scoop on the new clinic. And before I knew it, we were building a bookcase. Well, just bookcase. go right ahead. I just, I was just coming over to say something to you. It'll, it'll wait. No, no, come on, uh, no need. Um, we're finished, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You don't mind? No. Okay, I'm all yours. Uh, well, uh, okay, I, Ed, take care. You too. All right, Riva, I just got word. We're next in a few minutes. Everybody ready? Okay, because the longer I wait, the more apprehensive I'm getting. You're going to do just fine. All we have to do is convince the judge that you are not a flight risk. Or a killer, which might be a bit more difficult. Tell me, Riva, what's it like to be the angel of death? Edmund, why don't you do yourself a favor and go home? Go home? No, I don't think so. My brother is dead because of this. You know what, Edmund? I'd really like it if you stayed. Please. Because you're so hated in this town, it might throw a little sympathy my way. You're right. But I'm not the only one who's come here seeking justice. This has been Guiding Light.